Pulling down just a small part of the one corner there, and obviously this building is a total constructive loss. There's an aerial tower that is in operation at uh, what we call the DA corner. If you look at the four sides of a building, the side that faces the street is called the A side, then the B side, then the C side in the alley, and then the D side on the other side. You basically get count round like the faces, the clock, uh, the numbers on a clock face. So. On either corner, you will notice that you have the snorkel on what would be the A, B corner, and you have the aerial tower working on the C, D corner. Why are they on the corners? Well, because of the fact that this building is going to potentially collapse. And when uh, the walls collapse, one and a half times the height of the building is called your collapse zone. And that little pie-shaped section on the corners where the building would actually fall away from you is the only relatively safe spot to get your apparatus and personnel. That being the case, as you can see here, why on earth would you be pouring water on something like this? Well, you, you don't have really enough water at hand here to really knock the fire down per se. What you're doing is you're cooling it off a little bit better at ground level there, trying to prevent that structure from collapsing in an explosive collapse and taking potentially the exposure building on the a, B side of the D side with it. So as you can see here, uh, if you were to size this building up at this, this point, this is the classic example of being fully involved. Roof, sides, back, front, and the exposures, one large ball of fire. Now for those of you who would be normally commuting through here, or trying to get through here, the Lawrence buses are not going through this block. This is on Lawrence, a 3000 block. So basically it's between Albany and Sacramento. It's a little bit uh, east of Kedzie. So uh, Lawrence is blocked from, uh, looks like Kedzie on over to the north branch of the Chicago River. Nothing is gonna be going through here during the height of this fire or afterwards once this fire actually is brought under control. At this point, regardless of what you're doing, this building is on its way to the ground any building that is in fire, if there's any fire underway in any structure, that building is under demolition. This building, obviously, because of a heavy fire load, it apparently has a lot of uh, items for sale inside there. It was a retail establishment, it was a commercial occupancy, and it is obviously has what we call a high fire load. In other words, there's a lot of stuff to burn in there, and obviously it is going up uh, quite uh, quite well at this point. We have a lot of fire that is visible out the front of the building, out the back of the building. When we first arrived about 20 minutes ago or so, there was uh, fire mainly at the back of the building, but it has now since progressed, walked its way out to the front of the structure. The firefighters are working with a little bit of a wind coming out of the east here. So there's quite a sizable uh, column of smoke, what we call a header. I'm gonna widen the camera out just a little bit here and uh, show you that this fire basically is visible from all across the north side of the city. Not in the suburbs, but the, the smoke actually can be smelled all the way as far uh, west as the Kennedy Expressway, the Edens Kennedy Junction right around Lawrence there. And there's a predominant wind and it is uh, forcing that, uh, that smoke column. It's rising a little bit, but uh, there's quite a lot of wind. So going uh, from the east to the west, northwest, that's where you're getting that column of smoke. So uh, we're gonna move a little bit further uh, forward in, uh, in here to see if we can get a little bit better view at the front of this building here. But the uh, building, because of the fact that there's such a lot of combustion going on in there, there's a lot of flames coming out. It is working on the masonry exterior of this building. The bowstring truss roof, I believe that this uh, building is old enough that that, uh, that bowstring is wood. So the gusset plates that are kind of reinforcing the angle pictures. All right, we will pause for uh, just a second and be right back. Yeah. Okay. Okay.
Okay. All right, I will stand by for the go. Yep, go ahead, Lee. Anytime you're ready. Good afternoon, Chicago. This is Chris Habermill reporting live from Chopper 2 over a raging fire in the 3000 block of West Lawrence Avenue on the city's north side. This fire breaking out a little bit after noon today. It has since been escalated to a 311 alarm fire. A large section of uh, Lawrence Avenue is blocked off between about Kedzie and the north end of the Chicago River. There are no reported injuries. This is a full defensive operation. There's a lot of fire that has to be contended with here. Uh, we will have live coverage of this and we will continue to be over this in Chopper 2, bringing you the latest on our CBS live streaming service so you can tune in anytime and find out the latest on this developing story on CBS News Chicago. I'm Chris Habermill reporting live for CBS 2 News. I'm Chris Habermill in Chopper 2 on CBS News Chicago. Well, welcome back to live coverage of an extra alarm fire that has now gone to the third alarm level at 3040 West on Lawrence Avenue on the north side of the city of Chicago. We have a lot of fire equipment that's responded in here, a uh, building that is a commercial occupancy. It's a retail space that's heavily involved in fire. Basically, it is on its way to the ground as we speak. No word yet on what caused this massive blaze, however, there is a lot of uh, combustible material inside here. Again, it's a retail establishment, a store of some sort, and obviously a lot of that inventory is up in flames at this hour. You can see there's a heavy volume of fire throughout this building. This building features what is called a bowstring truss roof. In other words, it's kind of a humpback roof. Those of you who uh, travel around, maybe go uh, out bowling, a large span open area dictates that you have a bowstring truss like that up above your head. In other words, these uh, roof structures are very, very tough until you start to eat away with them, uh, at them with fire. And so this, uh, uh, about half of those trusses have gone in so far, predominantly at the rear of the structure toward the alley. The front end is uh, certain to go in in the not too distant future, and this is what we call a full defensive operation. In other words, firefighters are fighting this from a distance. They're out on the street, they're up uh, putting elevated master streams to work. In other words, there's an aerial tower there on one side. We've got the uh, some hand lines, some large diameter hoses to uh, feeding the aerial tower and the, and the snorkels there that are on the corners of the building. They're operating from outside of the collapse zone and that's why you're looking down there and what you can see are hand lines in operation but they're blowing water in through the front windows which have long since uh, broken and shattered away from across the street and the reason for that is that once you eliminate that roof structure once you burn that away then uh, that building is very susceptible to collapse because the outer walls are being held up by the roof so the front would be unsupported 
the, there we go, there's our collapse right there. That building has gone all the way to the ground. Now you can see that the front uh, portion of that building has fallen out into the street, brickwork and mortar raining down. The rest of those uh, trusses have pushed away and that building has now collapsed. So if we get in a little tight here, go ahead and take a look at this, uh, this collapse zone and you can see that the front part of that building has actually pulled off. So the actual front structure hasn't pulled away, but the upper portion of that building fell into the street. So we're uh, cognizant of the fact, firefighters are, that uh, they are going to stay away from the front part of that building. You can also see that they've uh, begun to use uh, foam on, uh, on the extinguishment here. And what foam basically does is it gives you a little bit better water coverage. It allows the water to stick to things, if you will. And that's why it kind of looks like there's either shaving cream or other uh, snow in the street, if you will, that's running down the gutter there. But looks like the front part of the parapet there had fallen away. That's a raised portion of the roof, which basically disguises the, the truss uh, structure in the back of it. So that has fallen off. That came down, the, the, the trusses have gone in, so the roof structure is in there as well. Blew a lot of flames out through the front of this building. This defensive operation is designed to basically keep the fire where it began, in the fire building, not allow it to uh, spread to other occupancies. And you can see just to the right upper portion of the screen, there's another building which actually abuts the building that is on fire, but obviously there's a good solid firewall in between those two. Um, there are firefighters inside that building with thermal imaging cameras and charged hose lines to make sure that that uh, building remains intact, that no radiant heat spreads to the roof on that side. So they are uh, up top there looking on with the uh, aerial towers for what's called point of vantage. In other words, they wanna get a, a, a real good handle on what is going on in the, the midst of a fire like this, and as you can see, we're, we're deep into this structure here. This, uh, the different colors of the smoke as uh, we're starting to get a little bit more of almost that uh, gray with a little tinge of, uh, of brown in there that uh, tells you that the wooden roof structure that hasn't burned yet is getting up to its ignition temperature. So the heavy deep-seated portion of the fire the heavy black smoke where you see that's uh, basically incomplete combustion. In other words, the stuff that is burning inside there is burning with such vigor that it is actually lofting a lot of that particulate matter up into the air. And so the darker and blacker and thicker that smoke is, smoke is fuel. So you can actually have smoke catch fire underneath there because that's just the darker it is, the more incomplete the combustion is. Now on the upside of this is the fact that apparently there are no injuries here. Everybody is out of this structure. When the first companies arrived on the scene, there was already visible fire in the structure and very quickly, in about uh, 15 minutes after initial arrival, the uh, second alarm was sounded and we have since gone to the third alarm level that brings more apparatus and more fresh crews in here. Um, this retail uh, establishment obviously has a lot to burn on the inside, not just the actual structure. This fire is burning vigorously. You can see one of those uh, strut or the uh, uh, trusses up underneath the smoke every now and again when that smoke kind of moves off to the side and the, the wind allows it. You can see that, that rib like a backbone up there. There was a whole bunch of those up underneath the roof structure, but the vast majority of those have collapsed inward with a big burst of fire out the front that also allowed some of that front structure, the parapet wall to give way and come down to the ground. So you uh, are operating here completely outside of the actual fire building. The whole strategy and the tactics that are concerned with this building is that you want to keep the fire exactly where it started. So you've got a big rectangular box with a lot of fire in it, let the roof structure burn off. Uh, basically, you have no choice. It is such a vigorous combustion that's going on down there. Uh, after ignition, everything that is in there coming up to its ignition temperature, all the different uh, uh, pieces of inventory, whatever fuel might be in there, uh, retail supplies, the actual structure itself, all involved in fire at one time. And uh, now we've got that roof structure completely in. Big burst of flames as that roof went in. 
a little while ago and actually took a little bit of the wall structure with it. Thought initially that uh, most of the front had collapsed to the street, but no, it was just the, the wall structure that got blown out by those roof, uh, roof trusses going in there. So again, uh, what the, you'll see firefighters with hand lines, you'll see other firefighters operating in the snorkel right there in the foreground. We also have an aerial tower that's operating in the upper right corner there. Um, those are uh, what we call elevated master streams, more than 300 gallons a minute per apparatus. It is uh, hard mounted on the bucket, and so uh, that is uh, pushing so much water that one or two men can't exactly use that as a hand line. You know, our, we pretty well limit that to under 300 gallons a minute. And uh, this uh, aerial tower, got another aerial tower that is up there. They're, they're watching not only where that water is going and what it is doing, but also keeping an eye on the adjacent building. You can see there's a building that's built right up to the edge of it, but obviously there's a good stout firewall between the two. So the fire that is actually burning in the occupancy there at 3040 West on Lawrence has not uh, communicated to the buildings next door. There's a little bit, it appears, of a space on the uh, west side of the building that is not butted up against uh, the, the downwind section there. But uh, there actually is a ground ladder that goes up to that smaller building uh, in the smoke there on the downwind side or just to the west of the original fire building where they uh, obviously were up kind of keeping tabs on that building, making sure no fire brands landed on there and ignited that roof downwind. We're dealing with a pretty constant east wind here and it's blowing the uh, smoke, uh, which is getting a little bit lighter now that uh, they've gotten the, the roof structure in. You can get a little bit more water in there. And that's kind of double-edged sword here. Uh, not only can you get more water in when the roof goes in, the only downside to that is that you have a whole bunch of collapsed structure there with pockets of fire up underneath. So it's going to be a long haul. It's going to be a big job. There's going to be a, a lot of overhaul work to do here. Obviously, the entire contents of this building have been uh, consumed in the fire. They've been pretty well uh, demolished. The building has, too, by the roof going in. Uh, it appears, at least, it's tough to tell because of the smoke covering up the rest of the structure, uh, what it looks like at the back and the alley that's uh, actually with the power lines and the power feed there. It's a little bit too narrow to get any kind of apparatus down through the alley. So all the big stuff is uh, set up out in front, the aerial towers, the snorkel, and what have you and uh, the engines that are feeding. There's a little bit of a relay pumping operation. They're, they're uh, taking water from several hydrants along um, Lawrence Avenue. So those who may be watching at home who uh, live close by here, a couple of things will be happening. If you live downwind from this, you're gonna be smelling smoke. So don't be excited. That smoke is gonna be blowing all across the north side. Uh, also, uh, you may find that you have uh, a little bit lower water pressures because there's a lot of water being put on this uh, on this uh, structure and as you can see when the roof went in it, it blew the rest of the front walls out a little bit of the parapet came off the top it's laying down there in front but it's a looks like a, a pretty stout masonry front end on this building so the a side of this building that uh, faces the street looks like that's probably uh, pretty well intact but it's still been structurally compromised the masonry around the opposite sides there could be seeing some cracking and whatnot but that's kind of tough to tell because it's completely covered up by this uh, large column of smoke which still continues to issue forth from here we're at the 311 alarm level looks like uh, as of right now we're starting to get a little bit of a handle on this we're getting uh, more of a transition in our smoke color and our volume velocity density color the things that we're looking for when you're uh, looking at smoke coming out of a building that is on fire. Lawrence Avenue is closed and is going to continue to be closed from just a little bit east of the north branch of the Chicago River, a little east of Sacramento, all the way over to Kedzie. So we can pretty well plan on that for the next few hours at least uh, as more water is poured on this building to try and get this uh, a, a little bit more of a handle on this and uh, bring the extinguishment phase to a conclusion problem is here that uh, with the collapse of the of the roof structure and the trusses that are in there now you have a whole bunch of uh, burned building structure that is in there you can see uh, the engines that are uh, backing up supplying the snorkel supplying the aerial tower and then uh, the large diameter hose lines which are stretched from every conceivable angle 
of all the uh, fire hydrants that are here. So we're drawing down quite a lot of water, might have a little bit of a uh, low water pressure situation for residents around here. There's a lot of runoff water that's going into the storm sewer, so be thankful that we are above freezing. We don't have to deal with that stuff right now. So weather is not really an issue. However, wind plays a little bit of a role here in the fact that you really want to keep tabs on that downwind structure. Upwind, not so much. A lot of that radiant heat was at the height of this fire was blowing off toward the downwind side or toward the west side of the building. And as you can see, that, that roof is completely in, so that leaves the walls basically unsupported. And that is a situation where you don't want to get any of your personnel in uh, close to that. So a good stout firewall. You can see a, a, a big, big difference between the building that burned. Look at all the, the sooting, the charring, the destruction there. And then just to the right, that building looks fairly pristine. The front windows are, are not clouded over. There uh, doesn't seem to be any humidity. In the upper right corner there, you can see that that building looks pretty doggone good. So we've got a good firewall between there. Firefighters have been in that structure, on that structure, around that structure, making sure that uh, this fire does not communicate. And there's a lot of radiant energy, radiant heat energy coming off of this, especially when the roof uh, caved in here and blew the fire out into the street. And uh, the roof uh, caving in, the pancake collapse, and uh, that just goes to show you that that is why firefighters call the truss roof the widow maker. Once it gets going, it may look pretty innocuous for a little while. It looks looks like you got a pretty good handle on it. The next thing you know, all those trusses fail, brings the entire roof structure down, and pretty soon you're left with uh, a, a lot of heavy collapsed uh, structural members inside there and unsupported walls on the outside. Very early on, this went to a full defensive operation uh, within an, about an hour 